the light emission of certain gases under electricity. Let me show you that in this experiment there will be three, four lamps. One has a hydrogen gas inside it, one helium gas, mercury vapor, and the fourth one will have neon. Then we're gonna apply electricity to that lamp, which is gonna excite the uh, hydrogen, the helium, the mercury, and neon, and cause each one of them to emit light. So what we're gonna see is the light emitted by each lamp. So let's get started with the first one. So here is the light that is emitted. Now, if we use a diffraction screen, a light diffraction screen, which usually diffract the light, you can see that the lines, the specific lines that this, this lamp emitted, which is in here, you can see the blue. Let's go to the next one. You can see even the light is different. So in this one, there is yellow, red, blue, in here, you can see that the light is brighter. When we use the diffraction, the light diffraction screen, we see the green and the blue spectral light. Lastly, for this one, we can see the yellow spectral line and the red spectral line in there. So based on this experiment, we can see that lamps with different gases are giving different spectral lines which is the hydrogen gas one, we've seen, we've seen definite spectral lines, like we've seen green, we've seen blue, we've seen, uh, we've seen red. So based on this experiment, the question was, first, why there is a light emission when electricity is applied um, to that gas? Second, why it is giving that exact line? Like we've seen one that only gives yellow four different spectral lines, then we've seen one that gives only two. So the question is why? Why why would one gas give four spectral lines while the other will give only one spectral line? So the first thing we figured out from that, ex uh, from that experiment that elemental gases excited by electrical discharge emit in characteristic colors. And the fact it emits in characteristic colors, specific colors, like for the hydrogen one, it emitted in the red, the blue, the green, and the violet. What does that tell us about the atom? That the energy is quantified. Quantified inside an atom. To make this easier, let me give you an example of this spring in here. So in this spring example right here, I can, I can put a certain weight, I'm going to say 100 gram in here, and that's going to cause the displacement of, this, of that spring by um, by a length of x. I can remove that 100 gram, I can put 600, 200, 500, and whatever weight I'm gonna put, that spring gonna move with a certain distance x, so whatever force I exert on that spring, it's gonna react to it, it's gonna have this display, it's gonna have vast displacement depending on that mass. So this is not quantified, so I can put any force and any force gonna give me a, a displacement, a certain displacement not the quantified energy. In other words, there isn't a specific mass that I have or force that I have to put for that spring to be displaced. Any force I put, that spring will displace proportional to it, proportional to the force that I'm gonna put. While in case of an atom, it is a quantified. For an atom, a quantified energy, unlike usual harmonic, It's either all or nothing event either 
there is enough energy to cause electron transition or there isn't. So in the case of the spring, whatever force I'm gonna put, there will be displacement. In an atom, to excite an electron, to emit light, I have to put the exact energy that is needed. So it's all or nothing event. So if I put, for example, uh, a force of two joules, if it isn't enough for the emission of the light, the emission will not take place. Let's say for the light to be emitted in a hydrogen gas, it needs 2.53 joules. If I put less than that or higher than that, that transition will not take place. That light emission is not, it's not gonna take place. And this is what quantified energy means. So inside the atom from this experiment, we figured out that it, the energy is quantified in, in the atom. So it emits a certain light and it only happens if I if there is enough energy for that to happen. Let's look at the atomic level. What did happen when an electric discharge was applied to each one of these gases? So in the atom structure, we have the nucleus, then we have the electron at a certain energy level. I just want to bring your attention that the, the y-axis in here is energy. So the electron is at a certain energy level. Now when an electric discharge is applied to that, to that atom, let's say this is the hydrogen gas atom. When the electric discharge is applied, that electron will do an electronic transition from one energy level to the other. So as you can see, the electron absorbed energy and it transits from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Now this part we don't see in the, in the spectral lines. Now when the electron transit back from the higher energy level to the lower energy level, it emits light. It releases energy and that energy is in the form of light. So mainly what we're seeing in the spectral line is the emission, which is due to the transition of the electron from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, and it emits light. Now, because different atoms have different energy level, so the light emitted depends on the energy level inside an atom. In other words, by looking at those spectral lines, we're seeing the difference in energy level. So this delta E in here, the difference in the energy between one level and the other, this delta E, we know that the energy equal HC over lambda. So I know so I know the wavelengths of emission. For example, in the hydrogen, I know it emitted a red light. So I know the wavelengths of the red light. I know C, which is the, the speed of light in vacuum. I know Planck's constant. I can calculate the delta E. So in other words, from that experiment, from the wavelengths of the light emitted, I can figure out the difference in the energy level inside the atom. The first one, which is going from the lower energy level to the higher energy level, we call that absorption. Electron, the electron transition. From a lower energy level to a higher energy level. This one in here is emission. The electron transition. From a higher energy level to a lower one. 
for that electronic transition to take place it should be the energy exerted should be exactly the delta e the difference between n equal one and n equal two the energy level one and energy level two if i put half of that value the transition will not take place and this is why we call this is why we refer to the atom to the atomic structure that it is a quantified in energy so if we go back to each one of those lamps, we can take the wavelengths of the emitted light and figure out the difference in energy level of in each one. And definitely the energy levels in each atom is different from the other based on the number of electrons and pro number of protons electrons inside that atom. Now we can calculate the delta E. So the delta E, as we said, is HC over lambda which is the wavelengths of the emitted light that we've seen in that experiment. 